Right. So let us see this famous question in your metallurgy. So what is so the question? What does this to say? So basically, what do we do? We have already done Hall Herold's process. Done. So in that, we have used a, a particular compound that is cryolite. Now, if this, that this question is asked based on that concept, let us see. So what is the role of cryolite and feldspar? They have asked. So let us see. What is the formula for cryolite? In a three AlF six is cryolite. You have to practice it, then only you will get it. Right. Feldspar formula is CaF two. Basically, when I see or prepare or when I have to prepare cryolite, first important thing, let us see how is cryolite prepared, and then I'll come back to the use cryolite preparation of cryolite. First, we are going to take feldspar. So, what is feldspar? CaF two. I'm going to fuse it with sulfuric acid. When I'm fusing with sulfuric acid, you get two compounds. One is hydrogen fluoride. I mean, balancing the reaction, just giving you general information. And the leftover is calcium sulfate. Hydrogen fluoride and calcium sulfate. Now, that hydrogen fluoride. What do we do now? I'm going to add two important oxides. One is Na2O and aluminium. <coughs> Al2O3. Then you get a compound called Na3AlF6. This is your cryolite. This is what is your cryolite. Now this cryolite, we are going to add it with aluminium trioxide or aluminium oxide in Hall-Herold process. What does it do? In Hall-Herold process, first important condition is the whole cell or the electrolytic cell, whichever uh, compound you're adding that whole electrolytic cell the liquid whatever electrolyte you are adding that liquid should be in the molten state so it should be in a molten state means these are the conditions based on these conditions we are we're going to add the cryolite next important thing whichever electrolyte you're adding it should be volatile the volatile condition it should not be volatile immediately as soon as you heat it it should be non volatile in the electrolytic cell so the electrolyte should be no it will not evaporate then only it'll stay and perform the reaction next important thing it should be less denser low density that means it has to float above the metal next it has to conduct electricity if all these conditions are satisfied then only you're going to pick up that particular electrolyte so uh, and you know uh, to satisfy or when we see all these conditions the important or the compound which was found useful was cryolite why cryolite basically your <coughs> basically your cryolite melting point if i see it is 10 hundred and 12 degrees centigrade and if I speak about aluminium, melting point is almost above 2000, right? So what happens when you're adding or fusing cryolite with aluminium? First important thing, cryolite starts or it will reduce the fusion temperature. So it's going to first important function. Please note it. This is where your answer lies. It's going to reduce fusion temperature. Means when it is mixed with this, fusion temperature from... To 343 Kelvin to almost 10 uh, 1140 Kelvin. right so so much is the difference between this so it's going to completely drop down the temperature so that the mel uh, metal does not melt in that particular temperature in the electrolytic cell I can extract it further and then send it for refining the next important thing cryolite is going to help or the second important condition it will conduct electricity we've already seen isn't it I've seen shown the cell reactions in hell horror process please observe so it conducts electricity this is also one of the important functions of cryolite if they ask you now what is the use of feldspar feldspar also it further reduces is the fusion temperature if I have to write feldspar further reduces further reduces fusion temperature so these are the two important applications reducing the fusion temperature so that the metal doesn't melt and further con conducting electricity in the cell so that there is exchange of electrons between the anode and the cathode So let us see this famous question which is asked under Hal Horold's process. So you hope you would have watched that video. First watch that video then you will understand this question. What did they ask us? Why is graphite preferred as anode electrode in Hal Horold process? Right. So basically in Hal Horold process we have two electrodes. One is your anode electrode and the other is your cathode electrode. 
right so at anode what was released oxygen gas was released right oxygen gas was released right oxygen gas was released fine okay. and cathode what was released aluminium metal was released this is what was we have seen the reaction cell reactions in halval process now what happens your oxygen gas whatever is there now i said what is a uh, electrode made up of anode is made up of graphite rod so anode is made up of your graphite rod or carbon rods okay carbon rods now what is your cathode made up of cathode is made up of an iron vessel this is what we have seen Now what happens? The oxygen which is released is going to combine with this carbon. So carbon, it's going to combine with carbon, forming carbon dioxide gas. And further, if I take two, this here, I'm going to pick up. Uh, suppose if I'm taking excess of oxygen. Now what do I get? I get carbon monoxide. So how many are here? Two twos are four. If I take now here also excess, I get four. Suppose. <coughs> So this carbon dioxide, now let us see whether it is balanced or not. Four and four. Okay. This carbon dioxide, what does it do? This carbon dioxide will start burning up. It will burn off that anode electrode. So it will start eating up the anode electrode. It starts burning away of anode electrode. That is your graphite. So that is your carbon electrodes. Right. So, what do they do? They you have to keep replacing it every time, isn't it? So th that is the most important advantage. And next important thing, when I see at the cathode electrode, this oxygen, whatever is there, it will again combine with the already prepared aluminium metal, isn't it? That oxygen will again combine with your aluminium metal and will form aluminium. So again, the oxide form is back. so most important thing what should you do you that is the reason we try or we try to use carbon electrodes why it's the cheapest way already it is trying to burn off the anode electrode so i am trying to use your graphite or carbon electrode because it is cheapest first important thing a very economical though it is eating up i can further again uh, reuse it and substitute the electrodes as and when it is required so when this answer is given to you try to write the reason first try to write what is going to happen and try to write why is it used because it is economical in nature